Go for it. We are filming you, remember. So whatever <laughs> you want to be. God. <laughs> whoever you want to be and whatever you Ooh. want to say. And I think was I mean obviously we don't really know each other and I think no. it's quite, it's really random. We met in the local pub Best place after to meet. freezing Absolutely. to death in their dining <laughs> room. Right, yeah. And I was like I can't stay here any longer. I've got mm. to go. And we mm. got chatting, didn't we? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And we were talking about books and writing and mm. being an author and mm-hmm. What your husband did for a living is an illustrator, am I right? That's there? right, yeah. I remember yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, okay. yeah he is. Yeah, yeah. And mm. um, I don't know how we got to this stage. Did you contact me and say, oh, Angela, didn't we? Because I sent you a link to the podcast, didn't I? And we were going to have That's coffee, right. but we didn't. That's right. And I and, and you said, oh, um, I'm busy doing a podcast. And I and I sort of, I jokingly thought, I thought I was completely joking when I said, oh, would you like to talk to a scriptwriter? <laughs> <laughs> and you said, yes, I'll book you in. <laughs> and I think, and then, I think sometimes people are a bit daunted by being on a podcast and it's actually not very daunting because it's just... It's just a chat. It's just a chat. You, isn't yeah. it? The thing is, I... Um, I'm I'm really shy about talking about myself. I'm incredibly shy. And I've just recently given up the day job. So the day job was... Well, yeah, in, introduce yourself. Tell us, tell us a bit about you. Okay, so uh, I'm Helen Taylor. And I am a chartered surveyor by, by trade. Okay. Um, although I've just given that up as the day job because... Um, I'm having a very significant birthday this year and I thought, you know what, I'm done with that. And for the last six or seven years, I've been writing film scripts. Wow. And I thought I would like to spend all my time writing film scripts. So so that's that's how it came about. What I should say is I haven't had any films made. <laughs> 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 so... So you might you might be thinking, oh, okay, why did you decide to write film scripts? So I've always loved writing, mm-hmm. uh, and when I left school, I was a research scientist, and I used to write um, scientific reports, and I used to just love it. And um, and then I then later I became a technical author, so uh, and I I was writing software manuals. And I really enjoyed that, and and I thought, well, surely, surely I could write a novel. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I sat down and thought, yeah, all right, I'll write a novel then, shall I? And mm, didn't happen, you know. Didn't, lots of words, lots of words in a novel, you know. You yeah. to, oh, it's so like you have to just write every last thing, don't you? So didn't work and I gave up on I thought well that's it I'm rubbish can't do creative writing no rubbish uh then I became a chartered surveyor and (laughs) (laughs) very diverse as you as you do as you do yeah yeah um lots of writing involved with that though lots of writing yeah lots of writing so yeah I've so I've spent the last how many years have I been a surveyor uh oh gosh over uh, what, nearly 20 years actually wow wow, wow. Ooh. um and i've r- lots of reports and things which i and i love love it love it love it and um but then as i say about six or seven years ago i thought do you know what i'm sh- let's have another crack at this creative writing malarkey and i thought yeah i can't do novels there's too many words in that and then i thought oh do you know what film scripts they don't have many words in. <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> and also with a with a film script, there it's very prescriptive in the yeah. way that you have to write them with the format, the the layout, the the style, everything. And I thought, oh, this is this is right up my street. It's you know, it's it's like another form of report. Mm. So I thought, oh, I like this. But I thought, yeah, I'm not I'm not very good with ideas. I don't, that's that's my husband's department, Steve. That he's he's Mister Creative, Mister Ideas. No, that's not me. I thought I know. I I'll adapt uh, books 
into film scripts. Okay. I thought, yeah. hey, here we go, win win. So, um, and I did a I did an online uh, course uh, on how to adapt uh, books for screenplays, and um, and I thought, yeah, this is great. So I got hold of some got hold of some books and had a and had a go and thought, yeah, I really like this. And then I thought, mm, okay, um, uh, the next thing I'll do is work with a, a screenwriting coach. So I signed up with a screenwriting coach, uh, lovely chap in, in London called James. And um, uh, the first thing he said was, yeah, yeah, but what about what about your <laughs> your ideas, your own? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I thought, oh, don't say that. So, um, but he, he encouraged me to, to, come, to come up with uh, my own idea. So I... Um, so so I so I did, and that's how I then started writing my own original screenplays. Oh wow! Okay, that sounds really exciting. Do you know what I love it? I absolutely love it. Yeah. So I've written three full length screenplays to date, um, and a couple of short scripts, and and I've put the first two. Uh, feature length screenplays into some competitions and festivals and they've done quite well I've won I've won a couple of prizes which wow. has been nice <laughs> congratulations I haven't, that's great I mean you know I have, it's not exactly um you know the sun dance. yeah no but <laughs> it's not sun dance but but you know hey they're you know they're they're bona fide script competitions and um uh yeah I just and I just really like doing it so, at the outset, of course, you know, my goal was write a script, get an agent, have the film made, win an Oscar, as you do, you know, of course, that was my, that was my goal. And now, and now I'm thinking, yeah, I just really like doing it for, um, for you know, for, for fun. Um, I really enjoy it. And if I can win some competitions, hey, that's great. And, you know, so expectations have been lowered. So we had, um, <laughs> can remember we had Lewis on, didn't we? Lewis Coleman. Mm, yeah. And he's written some plays. Mm. And he's, but they've also been produced and put onto the theatre. And I know there's a local, their local theatre company in... Oh, yeah. Burnham. Burnham. Oh, yeah. They do do that. They will encourage people to write... Oh, wow. Plays well, and maybe you know maybe that's the it might be a link that, that you do. yeah 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 I can mm-hmm. put you in contact with him but well, that would be um, great yeah that would be great and Burnham Theatre are quite enthusiastic about putting mm. on plays mm. that yeah. have been written by local people in particular because there's right. an interest so I think sometimes it's just worth having that so what sure. kind of plays are they are they scary horror things or are they no, falling no. in love and living happily ever after no none no none of none of, none of no, the above none of, no none of that <laughs> 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 um i try and take um ideas from uh things that happened in 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 history yep and my my three screenplays have all so far have all been um Either either solely period uh, pieces or have had a period element. So the first one is called um, War Paint, and it's set in wall or war. Oh, uh, war, as in yeah, yeah, yeah. As in, yeah, yeah. Um, and the the name is um, uh, War Paint, as in putting yeah, on yeah. Your, yeah. your war yeah. paint. Yeah, yeah. So it's set in Edwardian London. Uh, and it's the story of uh, a, a young girl from the provinces who dreams of singing on stage. She goes to London. Uh, she manages to get a get a singing gig at uh, one of the music halls, and quickly realizes that uh, if you're a young girl working in a London theatre at that time, you're life is hard because you are at the mercy of some very unscrupulous um nasty men that run and control these things that uh are basically just gonna abuse you for everything they can get yeah uh so she decides uh, to um, organize a strike uh and she successfully organizes uh a strike for the um 
artists and also the theatre workers. Um, and she uses that to um, force these theatre owners to um, uh, to stop uh, imposing these really onerous contracts and abusive working conditions on the employees. Uh, and right. she becomes she actually becomes a successful theatre agent, theatrical agent. Oh. Now, that's and that's partly based on truth. So in 1907, um, there were what were known as the music hall wars. Yeah. There were strikes that were organised uh, for artists and theatre workers because they were having these onerous contracts imposed on them, and their working conditions were terrible, and they were treated really poorly. So, so that all happened, and and at that time, there were also some. Um, Notable actresses, uh, Lena Ashwell is one of them. Uh, she was a, a very, uh, uh, a very successful actress, and she turned theatrical agent, right? And um, and was one of the first female theatrical agents, and was very successful. So, so and loosely, loosely kind of based on, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, cool. yeah. And and also when I wrote it, it was just when the the Me Too movement was getting going and there were a lot of young uh hollywood um uh female actors um coming out saying i've been appallingly treated by these you know these these uh these men in the industry and and i thought well actually that's a really interesting parallel you, yeah. it's a way to tell actually what's a very modern uh, theme through through a period yeah. Um, ages yeah. yeah yeah so so that's so that's how I came about uh, writing my first uh, my first that sounds sounds really good so I guess my question is 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 you know how much research did you need to do and how long did it take you to kind of to write that because you know it must it must take a lot of time and effort to, to do it takes um by and large it takes it takes well, it takes me um a good six months to to uh, come up with the idea, flesh it out, research it, refine it, develop it, write the script. That's it's a good six months. Yeah, yeah, and then, wow. and then, ask someone who knows what they're doing to read it, and then yeah, <laughs> then, feedback. Then, and all that. Then, yeah, but yeah. Do you then do you, on the scripts? Do you put like describe the area? You know, because if it's a play, it's very different to it is if it's a film. Yeah, yeah. But also, you still have to have a visual. People need to That's know right. what your vision is. Yeah, of that. yeah. So, so you're so just as with a uh, a a play, uh, you you break everything down scene by scene, and at the start of every scene, uh, so you give the scene a uh, a name. Well, you actually you describe the setting. So yeah. you say if it's inside, outside. What the sort of room or what the what the location is, if you yeah. like, um, and whether it's day or night, um, and then underneath that you have what you call the the sort of the action line, and that that tells tells you what you see. Yeah. So what what happens? What are you, what are you looking at? Yeah, yeah. And then you'll get the dialogue of the characters. Right. Okay. So, but the um, and I guess it's the same with the. Uh, uh, with plays you you condense it down to as few words as possible so you don't go into this great flowery description mm. that you might do in a novel sort of describing every last thing you just give a real punchy sentence about what does the viewer see um and and then of course if a if because if a script's going to be made then you'll get lots of uh, sort of technicians that will look at the script and and then they will start to build the that that visual um, from from what they're given in the the script. Just like they would in a play, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It is fascinating. It's, it's really. It? I'm mm. listening, thinking yeah. this is really interesting. <laughs> so, so tell us about your other um, the other two. So uh, the next script I wrote was called um, the recital, and uh, the ins. Does that link to coffee pods, which is what we've just been talking about? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I just slipped like that one in. Recycle, not recycle. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, re- yeah. Recycle, as in oh, right, okay. music, music. Yeah, yeah. No, no recy- there's not a lot of recycling uh, going on. Um, so, um, 
I was on holiday in Cornwall uh-huh. in lock in lockdown. It was for the you know that brief five minutes well, yeah, between yeah. lockdown we, one and two when we, we were all allowed on holiday. Yeah, yeah. We were allowed on holiday. Where did you go? <laughs> oh, I don't think I did. I can't remember. I we went to Ibiza. Yeah. We literally got on a plane and yeah. went to Ibiza. Let's go. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. freedom. Escape. Yeah. So we yeah, we went to Cornwall, <laughs> and and I think something came on TV and it said um, it said something about. Um, Oh, a, a documentary, uh, and it's about um, Vivaldi's women, and uh, so so apparently in in eighteenth uh, century uh, Venice, there were these orphanages uh, for little children, and you were if you, if you wanted to give a baby into the orphanage you you put them through a hole like a window in the wall and then they were they were sort of received in by by the good nuns that ran the orphanages and um and the boys and girls were um separated the girls learnt music they learnt to uh, play instruments to sing and to compose music the boys were taught um trades and then when they were uh 16 or whatever then they they were they left the orphanage went out into the world uh, to do their trade but a lot of the girls stayed on um because um the orphanages and and this particular one in particular which is called um la pieta um vivaldi was the uh head music teacher wow. for for um quite a number of years and uh, so he he taught these girls uh, uh, their instruments and composing, and then they would perform concerts from behind an, an a wrought iron grill wow. in the orphanage, and it attracted uh, rich Venetians and uh, wealthy European tourists, and it was and it was quite the thing. Um, and so, and so many of the girls then stayed on um, and became um, successful um, composers. And um, so, so I thought, wow, that's fascinating. Oh, wouldn't that make? Oh, wouldn't that make a good, <laughs> a good script? Yeah. So I did. I did my research, and yeah, sure enough, there's been an awful lot of films and things written about it. Uh, films made and books written about that particular subject. And I thought. Yeah, I still like that. So yeah. how can I put a different how can I put something different on it? And I thought, okay, what we can do is um we could have two parallel stories, one in the present and then one three hundred years ago in Vivaldi's time, and they can kind of mirror each other. So you can have uh you can have a, a, a woman who has to give up a child, um and and then you can you can follow that through past and present so in the present we have uh, a young girl who is uh, she's musically talented uh, but after her grandmother dies she um, she ends up on the streets of Venice and uh, uh, life is understandably tough she uh, she she she's an addict uh, and she gives birth to a, a daughter who's taken away because she's deemed to not be capable of looking after the child. Yeah. They say, well, if you're going to rehab, uh, you can have your child back. So she does. Uh, she goes into rehab. And while she's there, she rekindles her that, that musical love that she, that she has. And um, uh, it's all going well. And then, so, uh, but then she discovers that her child has been illegally adopted and she doesn't know where it is and so she sets about finding her child um so that's the present story the meanwhile 300 years ago a former courtesan gives a child over to the pieta orphanage and that child is brought up in in the orphanage um the her mother once she'd given her over to the orphanage, couldn't couldn't bear to be without her. Actually, gets a job so that she can secretly watch her okay her yeah. daughter growing up. And the daughter is very talented musically. Um, and these these girls playing in these 
in these orchestras, in these concerts for these wealthy Venetians and Europeans, um, they tend to attract the attention of certain certain uh, patrons of the organ orphanage who expect something for their money. And so when when and it isn't music. It's not music. No, 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 no. So when so when when this young girl is is uh, is caught by her mother, she doesn't know it was her mother being compromised by uh, one of these uh, patrons um, she sort of steps in and it all comes out so the pair of them are actually slung out of the orphanage so so the way in which the um, the present and the, the the past stories are are linked is by a violin that's shared by both these girls okay and the violin turns out to be it's the means by which they can actually survive and function in the outside world, having been treated so badly by everybody. And um, mm. so, and I used Vivaldi's music to. I've tried to tie in Vivaldi's music to um, as the story progresses. Mm. To, so that that was the so, so that was that. Oh, well, you've caught me. Can you please get it sorted so I can watch the whole damn thing? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, both of them, yeah. I'm excited to hear about the third one now, to be honest. <laughs> oh, okay. Th- well, the third one is is called Searchlight. Okay. And that's set in World War Two, and uh, and I, I must admit, I do I do love a good war film. I, I do really actually. Do. Yeah, yeah. I really do. Yeah. I'm a bit like that about them. Okay. So this one um, uh, is the story of. A young girl who is conscripted into the um, women's uh, 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 the women's version of the ATS um, right. at uh, auxiliary territorial service, mm. um, and and of course originally when World War Two broke out, women were they, they were allowed to make the tea, drive the cars. Um, type up the type up the notes, you know that sort of thing. But of course, as as this country then started to prepare for um, uh, the um, D Day invasion, um, they 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 started to think. You know, actually, we're running out of chaps here to do to do you know the more meaty stuff like oh. Uh, man the anti-aircraft guns and and the searchlights and that yeah. sort of thing so they but they thought oh you could never have women doing that they couldn't possibly manage that could they they couldn't they couldn't possibly um move a searchlight or you know whatever it was so they conducted experiments they they had to get they got some women together at a camp and they um gave them the op- gave them some training now are we is this real life or is real life this is real life this is real life yeah yeah this is all real life. this is not just your story no this is all real life yeah so um uh anyway uh you won't be that surprised to know that we were better than of course that yes of course they were (laughs) of course they were so they thought oh this is a good idea we'll uh so we'll okay we'll let the we'll let the women in (laughs) and so originally uh so that originally they had mixed um search like regiments and mixed um, anti-aircraft uh, regiments and then they had um, solely uh, female uh, searchlight regiments so I, th- I thought oh that's oh that's a good idea so I uh, endeavoured to tell the story of a young woman who's conscripted much against her her desires she doesn't want to know any of this um, and she goes along she does her training and she and she actually finds do you know what I really like this and actually actually I think I'm actually quite good at it and so it's it's her it's her story of of what happens when she um, goes through the training and then has to then go into action and of course horrible things happen because um, uh, when the when the bombers came over uh, to to bomb this country um, obviously the the searchlights would would find spot the aircraft um, using the radar and then they they'd the searchlight would lock into the into the aircraft yeah um, which which tells the aircraft where you're 
where your searchlight and your anti well, you are exactly does yes, the same yeah. in reverse. So yeah. so they used to fire straight down the um searchlight beams at the at the crews and um there were some terrible horrible um you know deaths basically. Um horrible things happened. And so obviously she you know she experiences things like that. I've also tried to explore a bit of female sexuality in World War Two because um uh interestingly the way that the authorities dealt with lesbianism and any any uh any relationships that might form in these female um regiments was um well they tried to sort of brush it under the carpet a bit i think but otherwise they would sort of split you up they'd they just um send you off to different regiments and and then hope it would all just go away um so i've tried to explore a bit of that as well um because i thought that's that's um that's Very controversial at that time of absolutely yeah. yeah 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 so so that's my script like um script wow okay <laughs> <laughs> so we really who do you see, it is brilliant yes, so have you got an agent no i'd really like an agent <laughs> and, and people say well why do you want an agent what difference does that make and i think and i think it would if i could get an agent i'd i'd feel that it would be you know it'd be an achievement wouldn't it have you, have you been in have you sort of looked and spoken to people well, or not yet um i d- what I, I I'm I'm really bad with anything that's social media related. I I haven't really jumped in with both feet. I do have a website, but I don't uh, I don't really do a lot of social media stuff. And and apparently the way to really get on in the film industry is to be networking like crazy and following everybody online and you know doing this doing that. And I'm thinking, yeah, at some stage I've really got to start doing a bit i've got to start putting myself out there a bit and um so i think actually that's probably my next thing is to try and put myself out on social media and get to know some people and um and i think yeah and 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 actually try and yeah try and promote that side of things i have i have emailed some a few agents in the past but um i haven't haven't really heard anything back really yeah the crazy yeah. thing about it is you pay them whether they do it or not i mean that you know the, yeah, it's not yeah. necessarily based on commission an agent is just like employing somebody to yeah help you do your job yeah yeah so yeah i think uh i think this year now that now that i'm devoting all my time to mm. to it i think i'm gonna have a real push on that side of things yeah yeah See if I can make something happen. It's, it's a strange kind of thing, isn't it? When you're starting something new and you feel there's a level of it's out of your reach, but it's what you want to do. Mm. It's, it is mm. a bit uncomfortable, isn't it? Trying to do that because I know my, you know, I've written a book and I've like I recorded it to, mm. on audio books. But when I was there at the studios, the the producer really lovely lady i can only remember her first name which is cherry which is a bit of a miracle because i'm rubbish at remembering anybody's names <laughs> and she um she said you need an agent you need yeah. I, I obviously i go through a publishing company but she said you need an agent she said and i thought i, I didn't think i was good enough to get an agent and i think that's yeah. the dilemma isn't it you and don't I, I think I think that's how I feel. Yeah, is that I don't feel that I'm sort of credible enough or good enough or, or yeah. whatever. So and so, and so therefore I've I've sent off a few sort of half-hearted emails to agents saying oh, hello, <laughs> you know, and and it's almost like I'm not expecting anything to happen because I think oh well why would they you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but you, you've capt- captured our our interest just just the, with those brief explanations of all three of your of your stories so. That should tell you that you're yeah. clearly doing the right thing. Yeah, I it's that's really encouraging actually. And um and I think that I think that because I enjoyed doing it so much, I just I'm just gonna I'm gonna carry on doing it anyway. Yeah. And and I think I do harbour this romantic belief that one day I will write a script and it will be so amazing that that it will find its way to you know Steven Spielberg's desk and he'll look at it and he'll say 
wow, who is this? I have to make this film. <laughs> is, he, is he still alive? <laughs> I think he is just he, about. Yeah. I, I probably ought to be picturing it at a young, before, <laughs> yeah, younger generation. <laughs> but I, but <laughs> it's a bit like Bridgerton, though, wasn't it? When that mm. came out, none mm. of us had heard of it. None of it was. There was no yeah. kind of. Well, I, uh, the only I think I heard about it through somebody else, through somebody mm. else, and I ended mm. up watching it. Mm. But mm. those kind of period dramas are so popular. They are. But all, and, but it's not just about the actual script necessarily. It's also the colours, the dress, oh, the this, yeah. the that. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same with war stories. Mm-hmm. You know, people like mm. to see the guns and the lights and the yeah. environment and, yeah. you know, all of that stuff. The aesthetics yeah. of it is so vitally important mm. to mm. capture people's imagination mm. and, and keep them in that story, isn't it? And it's Absolutely. I think that... Um, If you're a new screenwriter and you're writing period drama, it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to um, get it made because period dramas are expensive. Mm. And therefore, if you're a new writer that doesn't have a track record, you're a greater risk. Oh, I see. And so therefore, you're a a greater risk at a higher price, Mm. which is almost like a double whammy. So, and that's why I think, mm, what I... what I should probably do is write some present day stuff and actually try and write some low budget stuff. Uh, and that's where, and that's also where short scripts and short films come in handy because they, if you write some short scripts, you can get those made into short films much more easily. And they act as like your calling card and your... A bit of a portfolio type Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. um, so I might, I'll probably try and do some more short scripts. Um, and... Uh, I think, yeah, I think, but I think that the, the bigger the portfolio I have, then then people should be able to see. Oh, you know, she re- she's reasonably competent with a pen. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, probably a really strange question? Do you write with a pen? No, no, you do type it. <laughs> who does? <laughs> I don't know. I guess uh, there are lots of people out there mm-hmm. who who I'm prefer sure there to. Is, yeah. To write yeah, you know, with, a, with a pen. Because J.K. Rowling famously sat in a cafe That's with funny. all her notepads and pens yeah. and wrote it all out. Yeah, yeah I bet she doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> no, she loves somebody that do it for her, probably. Probably. Who knows? Yeah. But, so what do you call yourself? Because <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, the reason I'm asking the question was because when... You know, I've just done, done some reflections mm. and I was reading my own book out loud to somebody else, a strange person mm. in a studio opposite. So mm. it's kind of very current for me. Mm. And I thought, what do I call my... I recognise in some of my writings that I think, oh, yeah, I don't actually give myself credit mm. for what I am. Mm. So I am an author, I'm this, I'm that. I'm mm. da, da, da. You're a podcaster as well now. Yeah, yeah I podcaster. I put that on yeah, <laughs> but it, all of those things, I kind of don't give myself the credit and it mm. feels really wonky saying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. what do you call yourself now? Well, darling, it's a screenwriter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's it, isn't it? Yeah, well... Um, Does that feel comfortable saying that? I feel... Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest. Yeah, I and I and I think that up until... Well, up until now, and I still do, I, I can more easily hide behind the... Um, Surveyor yeah. label. Yeah. Yeah. Surveyor. And and in fact, only last week I updated my LinkedIn profile because I am on LinkedIn. Because uh, of course that that says surveyor and it has the you know the list of the of the of the proper jobs on it. Mm. And I and I put uh, I put the end date on the last proper job and and now I've added and screenwriter. Way. Hey, hey. That's really oh, good. Yeah. You, well done. As yeah. I'm a bit crap at social media, can mm-hmm. you just follow me on LinkedIn yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I can follow you back, please? <laughs> yeah. 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 So what do you call yourself? Me? Uh, I, I don't know, really. I'm a bit of a, <laughs> an odd job man, to be honest. Oh, a portfolio. A man portfolio. of many hats. Yeah. That's it, yeah. yeah, yeah. I but know. I suppose yeah. if you had to just, so like on your LinkedIn, what's it got on your LinkedIn? Oh, on LinkedIn, it's only got my proper job. Which is? Running an IT company. Ah. Uh, mm. 
But that's not really just your proper job, is it? No, that's what I mean. I, got, I, I think I, you're fibbing. I, I probably yeah. am, but if I put all my jobs on there, I think I'd yeah. Oh no, but People. that's no, that's the modern that's the modern way yeah. now. You don't just have one job; you have a portfolio oh. of jobs. Oh, absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know that. Maybe I should oh, uh, oh, yeah. update it, darling. Them all. Yes. yes. And yes. I was going to go, how do you have time to do all that? Because I well. nag you. <laughs> 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 no. Well, no, yeah, get them all proudly there. I might have to do that then. Yeah, but yeah. I, I just, I do mm. wonder why is it so difficult to be comfortable with the truth? Because you are truly a writer, mm. a script writer. You're, that is something that you're obviously, you've got brilliant ideas. They're fantastic. Mm. We're coming to them when they're out, all right. But do you know, why is that so difficult to actually say? Well, I, I think Michelle Obama summed it up really well with her book, Imposter, you know. Mm. And let's face it, most of us, do suffer with this whole imposter syndrome. Yeah. Oh no. You know, we're all so oh no, I'm sorry, I couldn't possibly. There's not I don't know that many people that are really that confident and full of themselves and I don't yeah, really. Um I think we're all a bit apologetic and a bit we un- it's very, very British, isn't oh, it? Just it? Yes, we took the words yeah. out of my mind. We un- you know, and we because I think, I think a lot of people, myself included, I think if if we if we're sort of spouting out about oh yes I'm this I'm that, um, people will think oh oh they'll think that I'm you know I'm sort of bragging and I'm oh you know I'm yeah. just, you know ooh, can't be like that. I, I, th- I, th- I think you're you're spot on. I think that's exactly what mm. it is. And mm. yeah, mm. You, you hit the nail on the head with the the whole you know. People think you're full of yourself because you yeah. are honest. Yeah. But actually, you know, it's sometimes it's better to be honest and tell mm-hmm. the world. And mm-hmm. isn't that also how we all make connections and networking? You know, well, yeah. all, all of that kind of stuff by sharing experiences yeah. and knowledge and contacts. And yeah, yeah. you're hiding half of your life. Yeah. You can't do that, can you? Yeah, and and that ties in with the fact that um, so far I haven't been all over social media and making those connections and contacts and networks because I think, oh, I couldn't possibly connect with or network with these with these with these people who who really are you know film people. How could I possibly? What what you know? Why would they possibly want to connect with me? Because I'm just a kind of a nobody that's trying to just write some scripts. I think it's yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I'm so, sorry I'm kind of contemplating here because I was with somebody this week and it was all about how important they were and all about what they knew and all of they were really quite controversial as well some of the things that they were saying and I was struggling to keep my you know how gobby mm. I am mm-hmm. and I was struggling to keep my mouth shut and all I kept saying was well that I think that's your opinion and mm. actually I think not everybody views things like that because mm-hmm. it was the only way I could kind of do it in a respectful manner without saying shut up you know you're talking <laughs> out of your p-. and also just because you've done a few bits and pieces and mm. some people might see you as famous it doesn't mean to give you the right to be Mm. I force your opinions onto other people. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's actually not that often that you meet someone like that. And I think when you do, it's like a you're more shocked that yeah. how can this person be like this? People aren't like this. Oh my goodness, you're like this. And I just think, oh, I don't really like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did avoid them after that it was like mm. I it was a little bit of a I felt like I'd been bulldozed by somebody without oh. any empathy for the rest of the world oh. without knowing also the audience in which they were speaking mm. and it was like mm, you know nothing about me so yeah yeah why mm. but yeah. I think sometimes that does then come back to your own personal self-esteem and your own confidence to Yes. Somebody in a different who yes. were, were didn't yes. have a good self esteem. I mean, I've got mm. reasonable self esteem and weren't confident. Probably would have struggled ten times more than oh I yeah. did. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They would have probably just been completely bulldozed by yeah. that person and gone away. Gone f- or gone along with it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, yeah, they wouldn't have felt that they could challenge it at all. Yeah. And it's a bit like you giving up work, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> being a lady of leisure as such, writing screenplays. I mean, some people think, oh, gosh. It is a bit like that, though, isn't it? Where people don't will judge you automatically for doing oh, yeah. something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, my husband is expecting me to find some kind of uh, paid employment fairly soon. <laughs> <laughs> Better get, better get on social media oh. and start doing yes. some, uh, yeah, to follow some people. What are you going to do, though, if you do go back to work and... Well, uh, so so I do, I, do have a, I do have a kind of a plan. So, obviously, I do want to spend a lot of time now uh, writing. Yeah. Which is great. Um, also, um, I'd like to uh, develop um, uh, a freelance... Um, position uh, sort of doing script reading so reviewing scripts for for other people and giving yep. them feedback um I've, I've done a bit of that and and I really enjoy it and actually that ties in with um my uh sort of commercial writing I've spent I've spent many years reading other people's writing and commenting on it and giving feedback so um to be able to do that with scripts would be I'd love it yeah. really love it so I'm hoping to try and um, develop that um, and uh, I've um, I'm I'm also um, hoping to look at some well I might I might look at some board positions um, okay yeah, yeah. some all right Boards, yeah okay. yeah um, but hey that's what kind of companies well p- um because I've worked in housing and housing delivery um, and affordable housing delivery, um, it would be quite nice to um, be on a housing association board. Yeah. So we'll we'll see we'll see, but that's that's kind of a that's a tie back to the. I was just about to say drawing you back mm. in, isn't it? Yeah. Again? So, but I really want to focus on the the. Writing. You've never thought of working at a local cafe then and being the waitress. <laughs> I have thought that if push comes to shove, I could just. Get a job one day a week at yeah at, at somewhere yeah yeah a it's cafe amazing or really something. how you're when you were talking about those two two options how your tone completely changed when you talked about a board and going yeah. to a housing association yeah really miserable it was it was like <laughs> oh my goodness you're talking to a different person all of a sudden you've been really bubbly and excited and then yeah you, you talk yeah. about that and yeah I yeah and and uh, and in a way. I yeah, I want to kind of keep that separate because that's yeah. back with the day job, and I'm really yeah more about the sort of the writing and everything. But is that about character you as a person? Because like you were so uh, that was a really good observation. I mm. noticed it too. But it was almost like, well, would you take a job at, in the local cafe? And you really became quite animated <laughs> then. Yeah. And I know it was probably like more seven, exciting. But it's like, well, why don't you just do that? Who says you got to go and do a grown up job? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, and I might well do. This is this is um, so we're, we're coming to the end of week four of uh, well retirement, as it were. Um, so the first week, I um, uh, actually the first week was interesting. I desperately missed my my former colleagues. Yeah, you know the ones I liked, <laughs> 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 and I felt this really. I had a bit of separation anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Thinking, I appreciate that. Then so and so then I compensated in weeks two and three by filling up my diary so that I was rushing about like a mad thing. I was I had things on, places to go, people to see, and by the end of that I was exhausted and stressed and thought, Oh, that's not good. So this week, week four, I've not uh, I've not filled up the diary. I've had some time for writing, which has been lovely. Mm. Uh and I've just chilled and I've just relaxed. And I'm thinking, okay, yeah, this. Now this, yeah, this this is how to do it. So just just take it slowly, relax, chill. Don't try and rush about like a man thing and start doing the things that you want to do and you enjoy. So uh, I've started my next script project. Which Ooh, it's exciting. Really exciting, yes. yes. I... I, I completely agree with what you're saying because I'm a busy person and mm. I don't always get time to write and I'd like to make more time and I've built well I haven't I've got no hand in building anything 
trust me. I can't even lift up a hammer and know what to do with it. Um, but I there was a sh- big shed next door and the guys reconverted it back into a potting shed. And I've thought, I need to talk to you about this, by the way. I thought, well, actually, I don't think I need internet on it, but um, I'm going to go and work out there. I'm going to go and write out. I'm going to go and put myself a oh, chair. Yes, It's warm because it's mm. really heavily insulated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm surrounded by things that I'm trying to grow which I'm really rubbish at but bloody <laughs> enjoying it I love it yeah um, yeah you know, every seed that I grow dies so it's fine mm-hmm. uh, that's my word any seed that grows mm-hmm. is a miracle oh. and I'm really grateful for that miracle yeah, so yeah. I thought if I go in there I put a chair in there mm. I can mm. it's and I, I love the sun as in mm. I love the warmth of the sun so mm. I thought, well why not and then nobody oh, yeah. can, there's no house phone there's no internet mm. I don't think there'll be an internet in there would there Probably not, no. And then I could just sit and write. Even if I just did an hour a day, it's like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what, do you have a set place that you go and write? Yeah, I've got... Uh, I, well, we're very we're very fortunate in that uh, we both have a room in the house that we can call our our office, our study, whatever you like. So I have I have a little room with, my, with a little desk. Uh, it's in the window and I sit there Lovely. and I write. Yeah, that's Lovely. where I write. Yeah. Yeah, and I do like that. Because you've d- you have recently moved, haven't you? So it's not. S- it, how long have you been where you are? That's right. Yeah, we we just moved into our house at the beginning of December. Yeah. So yeah, four, four, four months. Four months. Yeah. Almost four months to the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And so how has it been having moved into a completely new community? Because it is completely new to you, isn't it? It is. Yeah. But where were you before? Sorry. So we were living in uh, Rinkton. Okay. Near the airport, yep. and we were there for about five years, and it was lovely. We loved it. A uh, really, really lovely village. Very friendly. Very nice new people. And um, uh, then we moved to Webmore in December, and and I and. I didn't. I didn't have any preconceptions about it. I didn't really know what we were going to find, but it's it's lovely. It's really lovely, and re- I feel really settled. And we are fortunate enough to have the most lovely neighbours. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's really really nice. So yeah, lovely. Um, yeah. So have you thought of like? what you want to get involved in, what you don't want to get involved in. Have you gotten involved in anything? <laughs> I've been along to the WI. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, bless you. Yes. And and uh, I've only been once and everyone was really friendly and welcoming and it was it was great. And I thought it'd be a really nice way to get to know um, some women in the village. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, so I thought I would do that. Because I, I used to go at Rinkton before lockdown. Right, okay. So. Um, so they still sing Jerusalem no. at the end. No, they do in Rington, but they don't hear. So um, why is that? I was. I think that um, Rington had. Uh, it it was um, one of the original WIs that started. So it was very traditional. Yeah. It c- it carried on those those original WI traditions. Yeah. Um, Wedmore did have a WI, and it then folded some years ago i understand and it's more recently reformed reformed. so i think that they're maybe taking a i don't know taking a more modern approach taking their own approach um well there was a discussion about it wasn't there in the media about should jerusalem be sang at the end of every uh, women's institute meeting and about whether the links to christianity was appropriate Uh. and uh circumstances uh, okay. about inclusiveness oh, right. and that was one of the reasons why some wis have chosen oh, okay. not to go that way okay okay yeah so yeah did you have to make something on that time was because it was your no. first time you were <laughs> I, l- I love the idea of w i've never well i have I've done talks at wi but i've never actually yeah wait, so yeah there was a there was a really interesting chat there from the um the Wildlife Centre yep. over at Highbridge. Oh, secret, um, secret World. Secret, secret World. That's mm. it. Because they've just taken that over, haven't they? Oh, I... Oh. I thought... Oh, I don't know. I thought maybe I wasn't listening that close, closely enough. I thought I was. Um, you said they've been going for about 30-odd years? No, secret World has, but 
the people that are running it now are completely oh, different. I to oh, oh, right, I see. Oh, okay. Because um, it used to be the Kitner family, wasn't it, that used to run it? Right. Okie dokie. Um, well, it was fascinating, his talk. And he had lots of lovely photos and videos of all the little animals. It was, it was great. It was really interesting. So, yeah. No, that was so that was our that's my first meeting. And uh, <laughs> no, I really enjoyed it. Um, so, what else am I hoping to get involved with in the village? Um, well, we do go to the pub quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Mm, try and, you know, we try to go around all the different pubs, you know. <laughs> um, um, I don't know. I'm not a massive joiner of stuff. I, I tend to... I don't know. I, I suppose you haven't had time though if you've been working really. full time. You don't you don't do things no. if you don't Yeah. So I think I'm just gonna give it a bit more time and see how it all goes really. You can always be a trustee of our charity if you fancy it. Oh well. Oh did you see that? Did you, <laughs> did you like that? Was that, that, was, that was really good. You slid it in there. <laughs> well we just we'll lost a trustee. We need another one really. Yeah. We'd like somebody else. So oh okay. If you ever that's think that that's what you'd like to do. So Conversation some, off air. Somewhere Summer house Somerset. So it's a Somerset. it's basically a mental health charity. All right, okay. Yeah. And hence your mug. Yeah. Promote oh. the charity through the yeah. mugs. And uh, We're definitely not a housing association. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're no. definitely oh, but house is a common There is, there yeah, is a, yeah, house. a common a theme of, there, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we could go mm-hmm. You could slip that one in. So what does your husband do? Let's just change the I mean, I know what he does because we talked about yeah. it in the pub, but so by trade, he's a graphic designer. Yep. And uh, he likes to specialise in, um, well, he does lots of things, actually, but he particularly enjoys illustration and yep. storyboarding and um, all that kind of thing. And he he works uh, freelance now, which he really enjoys. So he, he likes working from home. And he gets, uh, he has various clients that he works for and he works for agencies and uh he um even though i do say so myself he's really really good (laughs) well that's helpful (laughs) yeah (laughs) and he's also um he i mean yeah he's 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 literally paid to come up with ideas and his ideas are staggering to me amazing yeah, yeah they're just amazing and he he is really helpful with my script writing um because he's over the course of his of his uh design career he's he's made videos and he's made commercials and this and that and the other and um so he's he's really and he's, he's really switched on visually so he's he's a really good person to to look at my scripts and say yeah that's rubbish and um or Mm, that's not going to work, you know. Mm. So he, so he's able to 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 challenge me, advise me. Um, he contributes, and and I actually think we work really well together. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so and some years ago, he actually wrote. He's written his own film script. He's written oh, his wow. own screenplay, and it's a fantastic idea. It's a uh, it's a, a fantasy genre and he he invented a a world and he tells this this uh story of a uh essentially a it's like a form of a quest that takes place in this in this world and um it's amazing and he did the he did the first draft and he got some feedback and he made some changes and then he was going to do a bit more work and on it, and then he never did because <laughs> you know he he life got in the way. Life got in the way, and he's. I think he he really liked having the ideas, and he really liked conjuring up this world. But actually, sitting there writing the script yeah. was a slog. Whereas I actually am happy to sit there and, and do, do the, the slog and yeah. do the slog, and I think that we would work really well together with him um, focusing on the ideas and the visual side of things. And then I'll sit there and actually bang out the script. Have you told him this? Many times, yeah, <laughs> many times. And, and he just... Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he's yeah he's open to it. I just have to... Pin uh, him down. Yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And well, as he's the only breadwinner at this <laughs> moment in <laughs> time. Yes. <laughs> 
So I'm I'm conscious of time. We're we're coming towards the okay. end of our hour, mm-hmm. um, but we like to try and ask all our guests um, for a goal that they they're going to set themselves for the next twelve months, and then we like to invite people back to oh, talk yes. about their goal, but also tell us about. Well, in your case, hopefully more more scripts that you've written. I'm quite Absolutely. excited about that. I'd be very happy to do that because yeah, one of my one of my goals is to write at least one new screenplay this year and some short short scripts. But I think going back to what we were talking about earlier, I think that I should give myself the goal of finding an agent this year. That's an excellent idea. I yeah. think that would be a good one. Yeah. I should give you a cut. This lady that I saw that was my producer this week, she's uh-huh. definitely, and she reads screenplays. Uh, mm. for, she reads plays that are on for the radio as well. And she oh, does okay. a lot of work yeah, for yeah. Radio 4. Yeah. I, I mm-hmm. just, I'm mm. really racking my brain as to what her last name is. <laughs> but I can ring the studio and get her number. Well, that'd be brilliant. Yeah. And then she can, and she kind of says yes, that's worth doing or no, that's mm-hmm. not worth doing. But I I'll, I'll mm. hunt it down. If I haven't got back to you, just give me a shout. Oh, brilliant. That'd be great. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank no worries. You. And thanks very much for coming on. It's yeah. been really that interesting. That was a really it's quick really hour. Well, it's thank a really you. quick hour. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you both time. very much. No, it's been thanks. really nice to talk to you. We'll hopefully see you again soon. Yeah. Fantastic. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks.